Hi, and welcome to another Meet and Geek session. My name is Matt. I am joined once again by Robert from Actify. How are you doing today, Robert? Oh, tippy tappy with a song in my heart. Very nice. I see that you are not sporting your usual Actify polo. What do you oh, have on yeah. There? I got a. Uh, like a they say sweatshirt. at the Oscars, who are you wearing? Who are you? Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Good. Uh, this is uh, LAFD first responders. This is the. This is the fire station in San Pedro that's part of L.A. City mm -hmm. Fire Department. My late father-in-law, uh, that was the station he worked out of when I he see. retired. And uh, when he passed a couple of years ago, oh, well, the reason mm -hmm. I'm wearing it, was, it was his birthday this week. He, oh, would have been, okay. he would have been 94. Wow. Yeah, he'd have been 94. But uh, the station itself, who I don't think anybody there remembers him uh, mm -hmm. because they were all younger when he was there all uh, before his retirement. Anyway, uh, they, they were nice enough to, to have a, uh, what do you call it when you bring the half staff, half mass, the flat, half staff, half yeah, mass, half. where they bring the, they put the flag all the way to the top and then they bring right. it down right. and they have a ceremony on, uh, for a fallen firefighter. But in right. this case, he passed away after he had retired. Wow. So that was nice. And they folded up yeah, the flag and presented nice. it to my mother-in-law. And so nice. uh, kudos to the LAFD for uh, doing that. I really Very appreciated nice. it. We all appreciate it. And uh, he helped uh, rebuild that station because his name was there. They built a an indoor handball court <laughs> for the firefighters to... Oh, yeah. To, well, they have to stay yeah, out. Yeah, you got to stay out. Yeah, exactly. So they had a... Uh, like a mini gymnasium that they had added mm -hmm. on to it that he helped build and his name was already down there on the floor as one of the people oh, of wow. the three rotating shifts that that worked there so mm -hmm. at the time that that was built so anyway yeah. and that's why i'm wearing this plus it's uh it's like i don't know 50 degrees outside we had oh, to well. close we had to close the windows southern california that Very is uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. yeah don't that is downright inclement don't, 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 don't give away the location <laughs> i don't want to be uh, talking us okay so so uh um, i'm trying out some new lighting what do you think oh do i look dead highlighting yeah do i look you look like very, a replicant. You look very extinguished, I must say. I don't look like a replicant. Okay, I, I, I get your, your... Isn't that what we're going to talk about today? Replicant. No. Re uh -huh. Aha! Repli I think we are. <laughs> no, no. See, you're, let's... A replicant <laughs> is a fictional... fiction. Well, for some of us, it's a fictional uh, being... For you. From from <laughs> that movie with Harrison Ford, where that's he's... right, that movie, yeah. What there were two of them? There were two replicants. Uh, no, there were two movies. Yes, Blade, Blade Runner and Blade uh, Runner. Blade how do I Blade. not remember that? Blade Runner. That's a replicant, which is mm -hmm. essentially their fancy word for uh, an android, so to speak. That's uh -huh. nearly human-like. Right. So. What we're talking about is replica. Oh, okay. Not to be confused with revenant, replicant. <laughs> I'm going to stop there. Replica. Please, but stop there. Go ahead and, and use your your real FM radio voice. For those of you who don't know what FM means, it's frequency okay. modulation. And we'll leave it at that. If you're under 40, okay. I'm not going to explain it to you. You can read the uh, the headline that we put on top of the email. Sure. Sent the invite out. <clears throat> Waxing <clears throat> ebullient about redundantly securing data while securing data and ebulliently waxing about it. You can say that again. <laughs> I would try to, but uh, it got caught in my throat. And there we are. And, and, and here we are. We and are, we are talking about redundancy mm -hmm. we're talking about well we're going to touch on replication okay not replicants <laughs> as opposed to replican yeah, right but uh, uh yeah what we're talking if you got the email and you're here now mm -hmm. well we're going to talk about 
about three things in, in this particular webcast. We're going to talk about uh, data uh, backup, not backup, what is it? Uh, I'm sorry, under utility. Disk copy, disk to disk, okay. or volume to volume copy. We're okay. going to talk about image backup, which is the standard in which uh, we use for active mm -hmm. image protector. And we're going to talk about file backup, file backup, right. file backup, which is new because it's active image protector 2022. Up until okay. then, it wasn't one of our offerings. So let's get started. And what I'm going to do is just bring in uh, present. I'm going to share a screen here. Mm -hmm. uh, Matt, you can... You can you can watch it through this webcast. Everyone else, just use your monitors and watch <laughs> it from there, because we're Matt. We're not on television. We're not. We're not. This is strictly through cyber space. But I bought a tux for the Emmys. I, I there are no Emmys for what we're doing. We're not going to win an award. We're not going to win an award. We're not even going to get nominated for an award. In fact, anybody on the awards committee won't be watching this. Okay. I'll give you a moment to compose yourself. Let me know when you're back. And I'm back. <laughs> Are we not supposed to be having this much fun? <laughs> All right, so I see the uh, AIP dashboard. The dashboard. Tony, how, did, on... how did you get? How did you get? Your, this is uh, this is going to be uh, right at the opening of the GUI, correct? This is when you first open the GUI. Yes, the Active Image Protector dashboard, which is the blue highlighted right. menu option. And again, not to beat a dead horse or become redundant. In this case, you can get to everything that's in this dashboard by using the drop down menus across the top, as well as just going down to each one and expanding and getting there. Oh, look what I've okay. look what I've stumbled across. You stumbled onto disk to disk yes. volume or volume. volume copy. Copy. Okay. And we're just going to go ahead and, and click that right now. Well, we're clicking it right now. There it is. There it is. All right. <clears throat> Essentially, what this is, is a way to duplicate or create a replica of a hard disk or a volume. Oh, what's that you're, you're, you're about to say, Matt? Why, why would I want to do that? Yes. Why would I want to do that? Well, there's a number of reasons you may <laughs> want to do that, Matt. One reason may be that you're running out of disk space on that you know, 250 megabyte drive that you're running. Hey, and Windows what? ME still works. <laughs> you, you, you've gone to ME. I'm still on Windows 95. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> Windows for work groups, 3.11. At least I'm on Windows for work groups. <laughs> okay, so uh, only a few of you are going to get that. Anyway, uh, uh, a, a disk copy. Uh, mm -hmm. You can't accomplish this by just going copy star dot star space D drive. Mm -hmm. Okay, because that that's essentially a copy command or going to the file manager. Right. And then tagging a whole bunch of files and then dragging right. them over to a blank drive you have. Right. Yeah, that's a form of copy, but that's not really a disk copy. When we talk about a disk copy, we're talking about the, for, the, the, the laying out of the data exactly the same way it is on the source disk mm -hmm. so your 250 megabyte drive that is getting dangerously full mm -hmm. and causing slowdowns or a number of mm -hmm. things where you can't complete a copy or save a file you realize you need a larger disk so one thing you could do is go out and actually purchase a larger disk uh, that has more capacity and then run this utility and what it actually does is it goes sector by sector by sector and lays it down into the same sector on the target disk, the one that you bought that may be a terabyte large. Okay. Okay, so what happens is you're transferring everything over, even though you know it fits. 250 megabytes will fit on a one terabyte drive. Mm -hmm. However, 
you still need to boot it up. Now, if you just did a conventional copy where you're just actually tagging stuff and bringing it over, uh, you're not going to be able to install that as your boot drive because, again, sector by sector means that the system folder or the system files have to be physically located on a specific part of the disk in order for the computer to access it and boot up into your operating system. Right. So you've now effectively created a larger disk. You now uh, you've, 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 you've duplicated or replicated or created a replica of your original boot drive with your documents and photos that you've filled up mm -hmm. and you've created a, a replica, except it's on a larger drive. Kind of like moving that mobile home you live in, Matt. Right. From from behind the 7-Eleven and you've bought right. an acre or yeah. two acres and now you've dropped it there. So now you have somewhere to store all those old fencing materials. Right. So same concept and the plumbing is there. It's all ready for you to hook up and go and live comfortably. But and, uh, and, folks, and, let, let disclaimer: I, no, we're not making light of people who live in. A yeah, great no, no, I, I need plenty of room for fencing. Exactly. So, yeah. that being said, uh, it's like moving from a small parcel of land to a larger parcel of land and taking mm -hmm. your home with you, so that everything is exactly where you want it to be. But now you've got all this extra space to create more, right? And uh, take add, store more pictures or right. write more documents up. All right. Uh, another another reason that someone may want to do uh, a disk duplication like this, a disk copy, is because maybe the drive is beginning to show signs of fatigue. I I, I have I have a unit that's doing that. It sounds like a chainsaw when it's running. That's not good. So before it does seize, uh -huh. uh, starts uh, what we used to call a long time ago stiction. Okay. Was when, when the the disk would just have trouble turning right and it's not like you can get wd-40 in there and spray it that's not going to work the the thing to do is that if this thing is still running kind of mm -hmm. like your car engine you hear a noise occasionally yeah. you know something's got to get fixed <laughs> if it's squealing it's probably a belt that's beginning to go that sort of thing but mm -hmm. in this case uh it's a it's a disk drive with moving parts and it's time to get and replace uh replace it with a new disk and mm -hmm. still boot it up. So you'd use this utility to make a disk copy of that particular drive in order to replace the one that's in your system. Or just one more. <clears throat> Maybe you got a small business mm -hmm. and you've standardized on how the operating system loads and what icons are in place because right. they, these folks have to access something for the business mm -hmm. that's not local on the machine, but the shortcuts are. So rather than having to go in and and create each shortcut and and go through a process, it's kind of like imaging, where you 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 created a standard standard mm -hmm. formatted disk with all the all the icons and shortcuts in place that are going to be utilized by the folks that work there, and you end up doing a disk copy based on that template. So now right. when, you, when you put those disks into a new computer to assign to a new employee, they have everything they're going to need access to. Mm -hmm. So that's another reason. So uh, as an IT director, yeah, I'm oversimplifying this, but as an IT director, we all know that you have to do some things that make that drive unique to that system uh, before they even bother to boot up for the first time. Once they boot up for the first time, mm -hmm. then everything's unique that way because you can't have the same drive with the same ID on the same network. Otherwise there's going to be a conflict. So but right. we'll, we'll get that and we'll get into that some other time. And again, so, this is, so, go ahead, go ahead. So, so I'm creating a disc from the existing disc. Mm -hmm. I'm now moving that physical disc, but I'm taking everything with me. Yeah. You're moving. You're actually, you're just replacing the old disc with the new disc mm -hmm. and it's not just taking everything. It's it's functioning okay. as if it's the original disk. It's okay. still going to boot up your system. You're still going to have access to all the directories, and they're all still going to be in the same place. Okay. It, nothing has changed as far as you, the user, is concerned, except the physical disk has been swapped out. 
Now that's me moving from one local machine to another local machine. What if I have to move networks? It doesn't matter. It's all it's all unique for the the disk that you're replacing in that specific machine. Okay. It, it'd all be right. no different than picking up that whole PC, that desktop unit, and taking it, you know, to the fourth floor where they're on okay. a different network segment. You're going to okay. have to make changes where their logins may be route differently. Not mm -hmm. sure. Every every uh, occur every every instance is unique on what you have to do. Maybe there's a different type of security going on. Not sure. All this is though is a utility that will duplicate or replicate that disk in the exact exact same physical way that it exists right now in the machine. Okay. So and that's that's free. That comes with it. It's copy or a volume or a copy of disk. Okay. So the prompt right before this on the screen said disk to disk or volume copying. What's the difference? Well, the disk is the entire disk itself. Mm -hmm. Okay. But as as you look at some of these things, uh, let's see, I, I can look at uh, disk one. Uh, you see, I've got a volume for the local disk here, okay. which is the C drive. However, if you look here, these are set up uh, at the time we formatted the disk. Mm -hmm. and made it bootable these are the system files right here those are also individual volumes but let's just say for example you're not interested in creating or, or replicating uh, a hard drive but you are interested in just getting the volume as it sits the uh, the volume that contains your directory structure mm -hmm. and you need to move it to another drive that maybe has its boot partition already set up. All oh, okay. the files are there. And okay. you just need to set this up. It's still going to be the operating system. You're still going to boot into it, and this is what will be presented to you. Maybe it's a, a directory structure that's unique to your business that you want. Mm -hmm. You want to provide simpler access for everyone who comes in and works for you. Okay. So those are some of the reasons you 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 will have this most of the time it's i think it's going to be when we're on the verge of disk failure and it would be simpler to just duplicate the disk right. rather than wait for it to break and drop a new disk in there and yeah you know, just get it now it's only going to take the amount of time it takes to to do this i have i have a unit back here it's a uh, a docking station mm -hmm. that usb connected you can drop two disks in it the, the original disk that you've taken out of your computer, you drop it in, and then there's a second uh, uh, dock that you can drop another hard drive in, and right. then you push a button, and it does it for you. But again, oh, okay. that's more money. It's another piece of hardware you got to carry with you. This way, bada bing, there it is. It's, it's a utility that comes with the program, with the software. Okay, so I've got that old machine running uh, ME, then I know it's going to go. I've <laughs> I've replicated the disk. I've mm -hmm. done the disk to disk option. But you know what? There's stuff on there on that that old rig that I just don't need on the right. new one. Right? How can I move individually, just files or folders? Oh, well, let's go right up to to backup. What you can do if you're anticipating some sort of a change. Mm -hmm. Or you're more concerned with, I think, uh, what you're what you're looking at is a file backup. Okay. Okay. And what you have here is is uh, look at it. It looks just like File Manager. Right. Yeah. And you can check the programs. Mm -hmm. uh, go into the local disk uh, installation program files. And go into, okay, I guess it's users. Anyway, you, you can go into it and look at all the files in the file structure itself. Right. And start tagging. Now, I was over here on uh, recovery because we had done this before. Mm -hmm. And uh, let's see, where are we? I think I put the backups here. Uh, let's see, HSB, Chupa One, there it is, back up there. Can't find it. Uh, there's a backup, there's a desktop. Uh, we can go and, and select a, a recovery point, and we can see the actual files that were backed up and okay. recover those. Now, 
for this this uh, file backup, what we're doing here is we are creating a task for backing up specific files. I will go here, here, and and look at all these PDF and 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 Excel files, and mm -hmm. I can tag them individually because I am constantly updating these. So what I do here is I am just getting these files mm -hmm. because they're constantly being updated. They could be legal files. They could be uh, they could be they could be uh, inventory inventory. They could be spreadsheets yeah. of customer right. database, uh, a customer listing that we're constantly trying to update. All right, and yeah. or we are updating. Period. We're updating these files constantly, and every time they are updated, we take a backup of those individual files because those are, for some reason, a little more important, and we got to keep a tab on all the updates that are, or all the changes that are made to them. So that way, when somebody comes to you and says, three weeks ago, uh, it was uh, September 32nd, right, that we need to track because mm -hmm. someone has come forward and said, well, based on this document, it says this. Well, then we can go and retrieve that particular iteration of that file, that document, that spreadsheet, that mm -hmm. you know, inventory list, and and bring it back from that date. It's, it's fantastic for managing that sort of thing. Now, we talked about we talked about how uh, we, we you can still access all this through one of our image backups, which is the next thing we're going to talk about. But what's nice about this is that you can keep track of all the changes in the within the individual files as needed. So and then you can restore those and print them up or send them as an attachment and explain. Here's the document you were referring to. Now, at no time did we say this document is a cure for cancer because yeah. it's not. Oh, you said you did, but here's the dated document. <laughs> it's valid. This is the date. This is what we sent out, and here it is. So, uh, yeah, nothing's going to be as dramatic as that, but it's a great yeah. way to save information without wasting a lot of paper, uh, keeping keeping everything, keeping keeping track of everything and all changes made to documents that are constantly in a state of flux. And that's what you do. So that is what the file backup's all about. And again, if you're going to do the, the file granular recovery. Uh, I forgot where I put the backup, but uh, <laughs> at this point in time, that's that's where we're at right now. So that's the okay. that's the file by file backup. Now the next thing we're going to talk about. Oops, hey, I'm close. It. I'm it was an accident. So anyway. <laughs> We're going to do the regular volume backup is what we had before. Uh, and we, we've touched on this, but I'm going to expand just a little bit. This is an image backup of the entire disk or of the volumes. Now, we're not okay. replicating to another disk because that sounds when you replicate, there's yeah. kind of a there's kind of a, a an urgency at getting mm -hmm. a piece of hardware back in the computer that's going to boot up and, right. and run properly. Yeah. This is when your regular maintenance, you're creating tasks to back up drives. Mm -hmm. You're backing up volumes, and you're creating an image file based on that backup. Okay. Uh, it's it's not individual files, and it's mm -hmm. not it's not uh, partial images. It's full on images. And again, I go back to our email that we sent out for this this webinar, this webcast. As we talked about redundancy, as I jumped right. through the email, we talked about you can say that again. And yeah, it's tongue in cheek. However, a rule of thumb is back up to three different locations. Me, I'd push it to four or five if I could. Right. But we have a tool here that will replicate post backup and send it to wherever you need to send it. The backup image file, the product of the backup process. Uh, so as opposed to the disk to disk where I'm physically carrying a disk around this way I can uh, replicate yes, the image to an offsite um, location to the cloud yes to, to the cloud offsite location virtually virtual well the, the virtual thing would probably be in the cloud that's your storage area up there mm -hmm. however uh, replication is a post backup process that we've mm -hmm. always had 
in the product. That means we do the backup. It's sitting wherever you send it. And then there is a, a replication that occurs. It's basically a copy, copy this image file to this location. And initially, that's what we did for the cloud. Mm -hmm. That's what we did for putting it on another, another uh, network storage device on the network or to an FTP site that we have offsite, or if we're linked to a, another location of the company that has a server room uh, across town. That's what okay. you do. But that happens after the backup. Now, mm -hmm. let's save a step here. Let's okay. say you want to back up uh, directly to the cloud. Well, yeah, now you can do that. So you can back up to an external drive you plugged into the server through USB, right? or you can back up to a uh, storage attached uh, storage attached box on the network because that's what its purpose is and it's in the server down the hall okay next to the IT office right. or you can back up to a secure FTP site somewhere that you lease or you own or go to the cloud you have storage up in the cloud these data centers are all over the world depends on uh, which one you're using but you can back up directly to the cloud without taking that step of replicating mm -hmm. so you do a backup it creates the image file then you do a, a a task is performed that copies that to a destination save your car fare man send it, <laughs> send it straight to the cloud don't put it over here and wait for the UPS guy to pick it up or the right. uh, transport to pick it up. No, you send it directly to the cloud. So you have peace of mind. You can still, with the utilities we talked about in the past, verify that it can boot up. You can verify the integrity of the data that's on there, uh, you know, run a checksum. All these things to make sure that you have peace of mind that should anything befall physically the building, again, like I said, uh, any kind of disaster. Flood, fire, earthquake, volcano, uh, anything that hurricane that that would that would compromise your hardware on site. It's not going to compromise what you have in the cloud because that's located somewhere else. Right. Or across town. Maybe across they didn't town. get hit, it, hit as hard. So you always have a way of bringing it back, bringing mm -hmm. it back and getting it up online. One of the things that you and I talked about earlier uh, before this was was if it's in the cloud, wow, restore it in the cloud. Of course, you may incur some extra costs because it costs more than just storage to have a machine up there. But right. boy, if if people can't come into the office and they have to work off their laptops, guess what? They could stay at home. Gosh, that's never happened before. That's people never work from home <laughs> in the last two years. People working from home. Well, the nice thing about it is that if it's in the cloud, they have direct access to the cloud. They don't need to go through the office to get to the cloud. They have direct access provided you you, you give them access mm -hmm. and create credentials for each and every one. And it's like they're working at their cubicle or their desk right. because you've done a restore at the cloud. But that's what's nice. Redundancy, again, not just for, for, for uh, disasters that occur, you know, there's there's still just when you think uh, uh, the ransomware thing has stopped. No, it hasn't. It hasn't. It's, it's still happening. Yeah. And and one of the best safeguards, if not one of the best, if the best safeguard is to have a solid backup plan. And part of that means redundancy. In other words, I'm putting my critical data backup images in five different places because the ransomware is not going to hit all five. It'll probably infect and 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 uh, lock down everything i've got in this building but boy once i wipe everything out i can at least restore and recover and bring everything back in maybe behind a day or a week but at least our data is intact and they can't hold it i think the most uh, on a serious note the most despicable thing is that they 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 attack hospitals yeah where there's patient data lives are at risk right. and, and 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 they're just doing it and sometimes they don't even bother sending you the key to unlock it after you pay the ransom, which right. which is even more disturbing. So mm -hmm. uh, that being said, again, keeping uh, redundant copies of your backup images in several places uh, gives you a lot more uh, latitude into how you're going to recover. It's not about how to recover. It's about where to recover from. 
you will be able to recover provided you you can access the cloud or the ftp site across town or maybe the disaster didn't go as far as the server room and it's still intact there but the the reality is you will get back online and things will go back to uh, your your continuity your business continuity will not be uh, interrupted so to speak only for a short time for the recovery process but then everyone's back to the salt mines back to work back so, to work redundancy <laughs> yes back to work but that's that's what i just wanted to talk about like I said, redundancy multiple places for the backup image uh the 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 ability to retrieve files that are constantly in a state of flux without having to go through, because you can do it from a backup image, by the way. You can mount the backup image and, okay. and navigate navigate to that folder where those files are updated. But again, they're not, they're, they're not the, the backup is dated for every time you run an incremental when changes occur. Right. And, and those individual changes just may be certain files that are getting updated. Right. But with a file by file backup, at least you're you're going straight there instead of having to navigate down through the entire file manager. You're just going to click on recovery and you're going to be clicking on the backup directory and boom, boom, boom. There's the six or seven or the the actual folder that holds all the files that are constantly being updated. And you can recover individual files from a specific date and time, depending on what you need. And uh Again, the disk to disk copy, a matter of convenience. You don't have to buy one of these uh, external mm -hmm. ex external uh, docking stations that hold right. your hard drive. So yeah. that's what I wanted to impress on everyone uh, for this product. Yeah. And, and we're slowly just showing you all the enhancements and all the conveniences that give you peace of mind, everything to do with backup. Right. So okay thank you so much oh thanks for having i me. guess that'll i guess that'll wrap things up for this meet and geek I'm yes gonna go watch blade runner now um before we go have we recorded this yes we have recorded this. and where do we find this recording you'll find this recording on the uh, actify website www.actify.com okay and your social media presence? Uh, both on Facebook and on uh, Twitter. Okay. So, and uh, if anybody has any questions or needs to reach out to you, they can do so through the through, website. Through the or, website. Uh, via social media, correct? They can post and ask questions there. They can, they can, if you go to the website, we have an email address under contact information. And by all means, you can call the number or you can shoot us directly an email. In fact, uh, there's a chat feature on the website that if you click on, somebody's monitoring it. Now, remember, this is the U.S. Right. So we're only monitoring it during the hours of, I think, between eight. eight I'd have to look. We're monitoring it during the course of regular <laughs> business hours. So it's funny. Uh, you should ask that uh, because I'm always getting... Uh, Sometimes I'm getting questions from the UK oh. or India. Uh -huh. And and I'm thinking, boy, these people are up late because it's the <laughs> middle of the day here. But they're asking questions. And I, I've had I've had uh, I've had uh, uh, instances where I have actually gone back and forth asking general questions that they can't seem to locate the answers on the website. So right. yeah. So they can they can send questions, comments, uh or just remark on on their experience with active image protector and, and the utilities that we provide with that okay perfect okay. that'll wrap things up for this meet and geek <laughs> session perfect, huh? my name is matt as always robert from actify thank you so much okay thank you for having me matt and we'll talk again very soon we will all right until next time take care take care <laughs>